بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله عدد عدد قطر الماء في البحار في البحار so today I want to talk about uh, you know the 666 and some aspects of the Bible that uh, the, that have also become part of the Muslim mindset uh, part of this I will be going over with uh, Dr. Umar since he understands the Bible very well but uh, maybe he will watch this and then we can reflect off of this uh, in another episode anyway so uh, what is it that I want to deal with today is I want to talk about the passage of the Bible that is very famous where there it talks about the mark of the beast it talks about the beast coming from the waters the beast that comes from the land and it's two possible different interpretations from a biblical perspective and then I will give one of its possible interpretations from an Islamic perspective uh, who is the beast of the seas and who is the beast of the land this can have different interpretations because you see first of all this book of revelations okay this is very important this book of revelations what is it what revelations means wahi so you have the gospel of Matthew, the gospel of Luke, the gospel of Mark, you know, the gospel of uh, the different gospels, okay? These gospels are the life. They're like the hadith or the seerah of the Prophet okay? So you can compare them with the hadith books that Jesus said this and Jesus said that and that Jesus said this and Jesus said that. But then what is revelation? That is the wahi. That is the actual revelation according to such and such person this is the revelation meaning quote unquote this is Injil and Injil uh, whatever shape and form it is taken to place today is what we have of this book of Revelation okay now this book of Revelation talks in metaphors meaning it doesn't say anything directly well, we have from the Book of Allah what to do with metaphors, right? Or mutashabihat. There are metaphors that can be translated. For example, summum book mun umyun fahum la yarjun. They're deaf, they're dumb, they're blind, they will not return. This is easy to explain. But other metaphors are very hard to explain. So, uh, the same thing happened when the Quran says those people who have a problem in their heart they go over the shady verses meaning the things that are not clear and so this is what's happened with this book of revelations all it has become is a book a book of many metaphors that uh, can have many different meanings and is not very clear but we're going to dive into a little bit of it so that from a Muslim perspective you can have some perspective of what this part of the Bible is talking about okay so for this, uh, I have taken uh, the fourth episode of the Arrival series, which I'm going to start with, inshallah, okay? So Revelation 13, re remember this now. And I stood up upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast. Now you're going to see two aspects. There's this beast that comes from the seas. Now remember what Dr. Omer said. He said that the sea, or not for oh, sea, but for waters, he said it represents people. But here's the word sea. And I stood up on the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy, meaning the na on his heads, the name of blasphemy, also known as kufr. Okay, so this part kind of coincides, but all of these beasts are seen as one beast. Okay, and then I'll explain this in a second. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard and his feet were like the feet of a bear and his mouth were like a mouth of a lion and the dragon gave him his power okay so you have this beast that is coming out of the water and it has the it it it, it looks like a, a, a partly leopard partly bear partly lion right and the dragon gave him power and this and 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 his seat 
and great authority. So the dragon gave him this authority, the dragon gave him this power, so we're going to talk about this in a second, okay? Then, and then this part, uh, it, it's not clear over there. But basically, the idea is the, gr the great, the rich, the poor, the free, and the bound, meaning at that time, there will be people that will be slaves, to receive the mark on their hand or on their foreheads. So you will receive that same mark of, you can say, kufr on your forehead or on your right hand. Okay? Uh, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the number of the beast. Okay? Then it says, Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of man. So the number of the beast is the number of man. His number is six hundred, three score, and six, meaning six, six, six. So this is. But 666, what I want to say about 666, 666 is not what is meant, like everything else is a metaphor, 666 itself is a metaphor for something, which I will be uh, shortly explaining. It's not the exact literal meaning of 666, just as it is not literally kufr on, because the prophet is the literate and the unliterate, uh, the literate and the, un, the, the one who can read and the one who can't read. The literate and the illiterate will both see kufr on his forehead. So it's it's it may not even uh, you know to some degree different uh, variations of this. There's obviously the dajjal, the person Masihul dajjal. So that is the physical person. But the 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 system, the order, the system that he has, the the forehead of that is metaphorical for a for its. The way it thinks, you can say. And this is all metaphorical, so it can have many interpretations, and no one right, right interpretation may be right over the other in general. Okay? I'm just giving you an idea. So now, let us try to understand this passage of the Bible from the perspective of the Christians themselves. Okay? So, Then I saw another beast rising out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, and it spoke like a dragon. It exercises all authority of the first beast in its presence, and makes the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast, whose mortal wound was healed. Also it causes all both small and great, both rich and poor, both free and slave, to be marked on the right hand or the forehead, so that no one can buy or sell unless he has the mark, that is, the name of the beast, or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. Let the one who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. Many people have been driven to wild speculations and great fear because of these famous words in the book of Revelation. But our claim is that Revelation is a book of hope, contains God's promises for suffering people. How is it possible to understand the mark of the beast in this light? This part is Islamically correct in the sense that Isa والسلام, came with Bishara and Injil. The word Injil means revelation of good news. So this is one of the reasons that out of everything that I looked at this seemed to fit a little bit better. But Allahu A'lam again. The first thing is to understand who this beast is. John describes two beasts, not just one. The first beast comes out of the sea and is made out of multiple parts of different animals, a lion, a bear, and a leopard, and it has ten horns coming out of its heads. This beast is not a new idea in the Bible, but is a reference to an older part. In Daniel chapter 7, the Bible describes four different beasts also coming up out of the sea. A lion, a bear, a leopard, and a strange looking beast with ten horns. Far from being a mystery, Daniel makes it clear that these beasts represent kingdoms, political powers that would rule over the world at different times. In Daniel's case, these beasts were Babylon, Persia, Greece, and Rome. 
Throughout the Bible, the sea is often a symbol of chaos and monstrous power. And in this case, the beast that rises out of the sea is exactly that, a chaotic and violent power that rules the world. John, the author of Revelation, lived during a time when the Roman Empire ruled the world, and the vision he describes suggests that the first beast from the sea has something to do with Rome and the way they encapsulated the worst tendencies of all the empires before them. The second beast looks more like a lamb and comes from a different place, the earth, which suggests this beast may seem to be Christian in appearance and rise up from a different place than the source of power. Now this is interesting because this is what Sheikh Imran Hussein calls Christ Santa Claus Christianity. This Christianity that's not Orthodox Christianity, but this Christianity that is kind of like chain, very Zionist Christianity. It's a very different Christianity. It has the veneer or the outside shape of Christianity, but in but it's actually not Christianity. So this is a possibility, right? Powers of the old world. This second beast will reinforce the systems created by the first beast and will cause the world to worship the first beast and will enforce the mark of the beast. So what is this mark? Many have tried to assign numbers to <coughs> alphabets in different languages and find names of human individuals whose names might add up to 666. But the Bible never tells us to do this, nor does it tell us what language the name of the beast is in. Rather, the numbers have a symbolic value. First, the numbers 6 and 60 are strongly tied to Babylonian culture and religion, and John makes it clear in Revelation 17 that the beast power is a spiritual continuation of Babylon, the kingdom that rebels against God and terrorizes people. So this now, remember, this is very, very important. Uh, the number 666, if you even do um, a search on the number 6, the literal 666 on the Bible, you will see that it's attached to, uh, one of the uh, search results shows that it's attached to the people of Babylon. Okay, um, so this kind of like the, this chaos that we're going through right now, right? It'll get merged to this kind of like beast. Um, and so Allahu A'lam, Allah knows best, but this is where it seems like things may be going. Secondly, the number six is just short of the number closely associated with God, seven. The number seven is the number that marks God as the unique divine creator made the world in the seven days of creation. 666 is the number of man, or humanity, because it represents falling short of God's perfection and glory. It's a symbol of humanity refusing to step into the fullness of God's goodness, and instead falling short and failing to live up to God's expectations. The great kingdoms that John describes in Revelation have done and will do exactly this. Revelation 13 tells us that God sees the violence and suffering that human political powers inflict upon this world. It reminds us that the suffering in this world does not come from God, but from the people using their power in evil ways. It reminds people who believe in God to be patient and endure, in hopes that God will complete his mission, that Jesus will return and bring justice and judgment against these powerful kingdoms and their evil rulers. Therefore, rejoice. As uh, Dr. Umar said in one of his interviews, which I haven't uploaded yet, but in one of his interviews he says the word Masih indicates the coming of God's judgment. Um, so this fits in very well again with that. Okay, So the word 666 or the, the number 666 uh, is tied to Babylon. It also is tied to the idea that where man be makes himself God and becomes godless. So this godless society where the number seven represents godliness, number six represents godlessness. And so when this godless society is everywhere, on its forehead is written kufr. This is, a, it, it's completely denied Allah in every shape and form in terms of being close to nature. It has changed our food. It has changed our habits. It's changed our lifestyle. We are surrounded by fake things like technology. You know, it is, it, it is a world that says we, uh, as long as we have, we don't need God, right? We, we have our, we need our, we don't need the boundaries of God. We need our liberty in every single shape and form, right? And, uh, 
you don't, a, a, a male can marry a male, a female can marry a female. So God's order has completely been disrupted. And the other word for that is kufr. Okay. So this is very interesting. Now let's watch uh, another uh, clip. Now, we need to remember that Revelation is apocalyptic imagery. Now, the beast from the sea, as you know from the previous lecture, but one of its possible interpretations, which is the beast that that has its throne on the sea, is Shaitan Iblis. And who is the beast on earth? Is Dajjal. So this kind of like relationship is also possible, Allahu A'lam. Again, these are all metaphorical things. No one can say 100%, right? This is not part of our... Uh, um, imaniyat uh, as such. This is a matter of interpretation. So this is one possible interpretation. Allahu A'lam. It's an apocalyptic book that uses apocalyptic imagery. And so when we see a beast in Revelation, we should ask, what is that representing? And one of the best things to do when reading Revelation is to consider possible Old Testament backgrounds. And that helps us here. If we turn to the book of Daniel, chapter 7, a book that has quite a bit of similarity to Revelation in a number of ways. We find different kingdoms represented by different beasts. And this sort of imagery is in the background of the beast in Revelation 13, the beast from the sea. And so this beast from the sea would fill God's people with trepidation, uh, but, but the way that John describes it is going to be in a way that's going to encourage the church. We also meet a beast from the land. And it's again helpful to remember the the associations of kingdoms with beasts here. Uh, but the beast from the land is promoting the beast from the sea. And we find elsewhere that this beast from the land... So over here, what I wanted to uh, share with you is that the, the beast of the land, meaning the Jal, is promoting the beast of the sea, meaning Iblis. This is one possible interpretation. I'm not saying... Because if you take the normal Christian interpretation, this is not the interpretation at all. And their interpretation within the Bible has a lot of uh, validity, you can say, also. But the other thing I wanted to show with you, show with one common element between the, the Islamic scriptures and Christianity is that the idea of 666, meaning ungodliness, uh, is the same as the idea of kufr. And so 666 will be on the forehead and kufr will be on the forehead. This is a common point between the two. It's, it's very important, uh, you know, to use the help of people like Dr. Omar Zaid to understand some of these things a little bit more deeply, which I will be doing, inshallah, uh, shortly. Um, and so the beast from the land may be some sort of religious uh, influence that promotes worship of the beast from the sea uh, in a way that would be deceitful and in a way that would... So the, the, the beast of the land promotes the worship of the ibadah of shaitan himself. Uh, so this is one way to look at it, okay? Um, so we will, inshallah, end here as far as uh, the Arrivals uh, series is concerned for today. Um, and this is like the beginning of the part of the uh, number four. But So I wanted to discuss... Uh, the Islamic perspective on 666 and its relationship with the word kufr and that you will not be able to buy or sell without his mark meaning what now uh, let me actually show you a few parts of the uh, Bible okay um, let me show you a few parts of the Bible so this is uh, Revelation 13 where it says, uh, you know, they will not, and here, the, him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of man. The number, his number is six hundred, six score and six. And the verse before that says, and no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark. Okay, you will not be able to buy or sell except you will be doing something kufr. You will be, uh, the whole commerce, the whole capitalistic society, the whole consumer society, this whole consumer system, the system of consumerism, the whole system of economics, the, the paper money, the paper money, all of it will be built upon kufr. 
which will be denial of Allah's system, denial of gold and silver, replaced by something other than the order that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. And so this is uh, one possible interpretation of this, this whole passage of the Bible and how it relates to other passages, passages of the Bible. So if somebody wants to do more research, more thought, uh, you know, please share that in your comment section. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now, as for the uh, the part of uh, that I usually do for a few minutes at the end, uh, as far as uh, spirituality is concerned, again, uh, when we are uh, dealing with this, and Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, and Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Um, I want everyone to think today and to say 40 times Alhamdulillah ala ni'mat al-Islam Alhamdulillah for the ni'mah of Islam because Islam is the greatest uh, blessing, the greatest ni'mah that we have this type of knowledge, this type of understanding and all we have to do is, you know, we can act upon it now if we don't have the knowledge, we can't act upon it but if we have the knowledge, Allah allows us inshallah to act upon it so I want everyone to thank Allah for the blessings of Islam, for the blessings of Quran, for this type, this knowledge of the sacred, for the blessings of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, who out of his mercy ar-Rahman wa'allam al-Quran. Right. So I want you to think where you would be today if you didn't have Islam. So with this idea, I want you to. Th Praise Allah and I want you to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his hamd and his shukr, right? Uh, that you have the ni'mah of Islam. So we'll do, you know, we'll say alhamdulillah, 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 alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, 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 Alhamdulillah. So next time you pray, inshallah, remember that how much gratitude we owe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it this type of uh, knowing and this sacred knowledge and this understanding and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in our understanding and our foresight and our basira and our nur and our understanding and protect us from a'udhu uh, billahi an akuna aw an nakuna min al we seek Allah's refuge from being amongst the jahileen so the ni'mah of Islam is a great ni'mah alhamdulillah